Welcome back to Tales from the Bargain Bin, where- OH MY GOD! Ah! 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 Last time we looked at Mariah Carey's puke-inducing perfect childhood, and now we move out to a farm to watch Pup, aka Head Over Hooves, aka Black to the Moon 3D, aka Blackie and Canuto. The base plot is that one of the main characters wants to fly and there's a talking dog, so I assume they were trying to capitalize off the movie Up. It was made by Kaboom, and they really want you to know it, with every preview on the DVD featuring the brand very prominently. It's also multiple movies stitched together, but not in the sense that they are copying several different movies at once. It is just... bizarre. In unfathomable ways. But I'll just show you. Without further delay, let's begin. We begin with a flash from the ending. Some dogs are on a rocket while the main character fights some big pink thing. He stops the scene so that he can tell the story, and it's kind of jarring. Stop! What's going on out here? Okay, okay, that's better. People ask me nowadays what happened back in the beginning. So, to each and every who asks me, my answer is always the same. That's where the whole story started. Something about his wording is just unnatural, and it's a problem present throughout the movie. I'm pretty convinced the voice acting for this movie was done the same way Oblivion was, and that no one had a clue what the context of their lines were. Add to that the fact that it was probably poorly translated, and you get the mess you see before you today. So Canuto, our main character, explains that he was raised to be a sheepdog. And today's lesson? Herding. Now pay attention, Canuto. If a sheep leaves a flock from the rear, you have to run around in front of it, cut off its escape, and chase it back in. It's not complicated. And then, you go back to where you were. Unless where you are is where you were in the first place. Right. Then you gotta keep an eye on the left. One day, some baby sheep are born, and one of them comes out black. She is very creatively named... Blackie. Yes, yes, I know, let's all try to be adults here. Blackie is a somewhat common name for black pets. She can be part of our herd. I really hope he doesn't mean what I think he means by that. Blackie's place on the farm is confusing. On one hand, they all fawn over her, but on the other hand, she is treated as ugly. I like it. It reminds me of something I stepped in once. Seems we have a black sheep in the flock. Well, she's so cute. Pride of the year. We'll call her Blackie. She is also an example of the trope, born sexy yesterday. I don't mind that trope, but usually the person in question at least looks like an adult, whereas she just pops out as a baby and is already kinda, well, this. And from that hmm. moment, nothing was ever the same again. There's a small montage of them growing up, and she is portrayed as a skilled dancer for some reason. It has no bearing on the plot whatsoever. The scene is only there to take up time and make her more quirky. She is also a bit of a prima donna. Couldn't you at least give him a hand? You don't expect me to put that in my mouth, do you? Mm-hmm. What do you mean, mm-hmm? Is there a camera in the bushes or something? She is too young for this casting couch bullshit. One day she's running around doing her manic pixie dream girl routine, and she sees the moon landing on TV. God damn it, you can't just say that! Look, I'll make a quick edit to prove that the scene works much better when you let it speak for itself. <sighs> See? Oh well, whatever. The point of the scene is she now wants to go to the moon. This newfound desire is encouraged by a creepy bird flirting with her. You two are traveling, and 
Where will you go? I'm going to the moon. Ah, to the moon. So you'll join the others? The others? Yes. All those black spots there are sheep, like you. Oh, I didn't know. But I can tell you, even there, you'll be the most beautiful. <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> you think so? <laughs> I can assure you. <laughs> well, then. <laughs> Were they gonna fuck? It sure seems like it. Remember, at this time, she is a kid. It is very off putting how often this movie borders on an episode of Law and Order SVU. Now they've grown up, and Blackie has settled fully into being a diva. Did she have a pretty dress? That doesn't matter. Beauty lies within. Of course you'd say that. I'd say the same if I looked like you. But I'm not you, am I? Whoa. Whoa. She finds a helmet and starts experimenting with catapulting farm animals in the hopes of flinging herself up to the moon. What has that nutcase promised you? She's going to show us how to do makeup like her. Look, I've already tried it. What do you think? It's great. Uh-huh. Yuck! It's disgusting! You know, one thing I appreciate about this movie is that the weird dialogue gets very blunt. The farmer is about to milk the cows and see all of this, so Canuto distracts him. I'm actually not sure why. I don't know what he expects the farmer to do if he sees this. If I were him, I'd just open up a circus. Blackie's name starts to get harder to ignore. Do you think I could get to Hollywood on that? It depends on the wind. Are you guys crazy? And you, where do you think you're going? All by yourself. To the moon, pea brain. How many times do I have to tell you? You're off your rocker, Blackie. Stop saying it! And she sets off for the skies. Kanuto and Blackie's sisters go off to find her, but unfortunately have a stroke along the way. Is Blackie really our sister? All sheep are brothers and sisters. It's always the same old story. By the way, what time's curfew tonight? What? <laughs> they find her dangling over a cliff, but her sisters are too tired to go any further, so he goes without them. They're afraid of wolves, but he drops a line about tigers. <laughs> the wolf? What wolf? There's no wolves here, the tigers have eaten them all! I think this was meant to be an obvious, reassuring lie, but it came off so stilted that I just thought there were tigers. <laughs> Spoiler, there aren't. Blackie gets a visit from the catty butterfly. Oh my my, this is quite a predicament. You seem to be someone I could get on with. Would you like to be my friend? If I were, what's in it for me? Well, for starters, with a face like a flatfish, you must have a problem making any. <laughs> my face looks like what? Don't go there. Is it a yes or no? I'm afraid it's no. Ta-ta. <laughs> and Canuto comes to the rescue. <laughs> While they are stuck on a cliff, what I consider to be movie number two starts. Blackie's sisters meet fashion designer Carl Wolf, who I swear must be a reference to someone, but I wouldn't know. He promises to make them into models. I don't mind his character in principle, but he's a famous fashionista who lives in a big house and there is no other indication that sentient animals are a normal thing in this world. It really does feel like he's visiting from a different movie. Back on the cliff, Blackie is still being a bitch. I bet I'll be crowd queen of the moon as soon as they set eyes on me. Huh. All you ever think about is yourself. <laughs> but there's no one else here, is there? <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the farm, a soldier shows up out of the blue to give the farmers an unprompted trial period with an army dog, which I consider to be the start of movie number three. The farmer and the army dog find Canuto and Blackie on the cliff. You got nothing more to worry about, Blackie. Daddy's here. 
Ugh, this is just a personal thing, but I've always hated when people call themselves daddy or mommy when talking to their pets. It just feels... wrong. Blackie has a run-in with the new dog, and it does not go well. Have you got something wrong with your eyes? Who are you? Your worst nightmare, darling, so I'd advise you to get your act together before I lose my temper and dye you white just like you deserve. Holy shit, that is a bold fucking line to put in. Also, I somehow missed his name like three times watching this movie. That's my fault. His name is Grumbo. Anyway, Grumbo makes them all do push-ups, the beginning of his boot camp. He puts Blackie in the hole, and Canuto goes to help her. The duck sucks up to Grumbo as a distraction, and after talking to Canuto, Blackie tries to escape. The joke is that she should have pulled the door and I was ready to show the previous clip and say that the door does open outward, thinking that they would have made an animation mistake, but no, it's consistent. Surprising. Next, Canuto wants to find the missing sheep, but Blackie is still intent on going to the moon. What about the others? They'll just have to do like us. Look, Blackie, we can't go to the moon on a whim. What if what you saw on TV was fake? And besides, we must rescue the others. Look, honey, you're the one who lost them, not me. So, you do what you want. Me, I'm going to the moon. Bye then. Bye then to you, you stuck-up piece of sh sheep. Blackie goes off on her own and meets Carl Wolf. Canuto decides to go with her, though, because he's worried about her and he tracks them down. At his house, the wolf tries to sweet-talk Blackie, but she isn't buying it. He has these caged songbirds that I felt bad about before, but after watching a second time and realizing one of them is the creep from earlier, maybe they deserve it. Canuto finds the missing sheep in the basement, where they are being used for their wool in a sweatshop being run by racist stereotype nightmare spiders. Come on girls, let's get out of here! So, little mongrel, you think you can mess with us? You make me laugh! Ha ha ha! I cannot comprehend how this was made, even if it is a foreign film. Sure, it's racist, but Jesus Christ, look at their faces! I had just read Stephen King's It when I watched this, and these Adam Sandler caricatures feel right at home in Derry. They are the perfect blend of racist and horrifying, and it just gets worse! Oh, one drop of my Fushi Cobra Venom, and you will die like dog! Hey, Fushi, can you swim? What about swim? Come and fight! Oh no! Pee pee! We are free! Is it... is it bad that I laughed? Also, what the hell is Canuto drinking that makes his pee come out as a sludge that flows directly into the drain without a trace like some eldritch piss demon? And what's worse was the girls were impressed by it. Far be it from me to judge someone's fetishes, but Jesus Christ, it's a kid's movie. Carl Wolf is still trying to woo Blackie, even though he's simply imprisoned her sisters, and Canuto stumbles in and gets jealous. Blackie walks out and Canuto knocks down the wolf, leaving the sisters to go home on their own. When he finally tracks down Blackie, he tries to order her to return home, even threatening to bite her. I get that he's a sheepdog and all, but that is weirdly creepy. Just something about the whole ordering around a sentient being under threat of violent force thing that just oddly doesn't sit right with me. She calls him on his bluff though when we cut to the sisters finding the other farm animals trained to be mindless drones. Back to the hill in the daytime where Canuto is still trying to convince Blackie to quit with her obsession with the moon. Can't your pea brain register that I'm special? The farm's too small for me. I'm going to the moon because I want to, you idiot! Don't you call me an idiot! Asking why he cares so much, Blackie forces Canuto to confess that he loves her, which makes the violent threat thing even creepier. But she already knew how he felt, of course. Mm hmm You've known all along. So why do you treat me like dirt? Well, it's been working well so far, hasn't it? Back at the farm, Grumbo refuses to believe that Canuto stopped the wolf. That's about it. At Blackie's insistence, she and Canuto go to investigate a sign in the distance. Further up the road, there's an old cable car. 
There's a cut to the farm, but all that matters is that Grumbo is still being a drill sergeant, and the woman farmer wants to go look for Blackie and Canuto. On the cable car, Blackie sets it going and then goes completely brain dead. <laughs> I'm off to the moon! <laughs> Be careful, it doesn't look very safe. I found a spaceship! That's enough! Stop it! How can you treat me like this? You can't jump like that in a cable car. You're always right. That only applies to rusty cable cars that are about mm. to fall apart. No, it applies to everything. Everything I do upsets you. The only way I can please you is by remaining silent, like this. Mm -hmm. I will never say another word. I was fine with her being a diva, but throwing a tantrum because she can't jump around in a barely functioning vehicle is a bridge too far for me. I say let her go, she's just not worth it, Canuto. Of course the cable snaps and they crash and are descended upon by dogs dressed as wolves. Remember this scene? The wolf? What wolf? There's no wolves here, the tigers have eaten them all. Well this would have been a great opportunity to make that line make sense. Have the dogs dressed as tigers instead. It's a very minor change that would have added a bit more charm and cohesion to the movie. But regardless, this is the start of movie number four. These dogs say that Canuto is actually Yuri, an astronaut dog. Before they can explain more, they are run off by an off-screen monster named Pinky. Back at their base, they continue pushing that he is Yuri. Aren't you going to get in your basket, Yuri? That's your basket there, Yuri. You know full well. Are you talking to me? They are all apparently genetically enhanced to be given special powers, a fact which is in no way made apparent by the events of the movie. The closest we get is him attacking Carl Wolf, but there was nothing particularly extraordinary about that. He isn't any smarter than the other animals, he can't talk in a way that the humans understand, so what is so special about him? Well, nothing, really. To the moon! You see, Canuto, you see, I was right! He wants to know if that's your mascot. She seems to be as much a pain in the neck as Pinky is. Can you deactivate her? You know, Blackie is a bitch, but she has done basically nothing to deserve this treatment from these particular characters. What, are they racist? Why the hostility? As for the mascot thing, they explain that Pinky was a sheep engineered to be young and cute forever, but she mutated and hulked out. They can't deactivate her without the password, which they don't have. She's kept on growing, and she's still angry with us. So the spaceship's getting rusty, and our chances for a moonshot have been zilch. How can you possibly be scared of a pink sheep? Bunch of scaredy cats. Let me take care of this. That's enough, Blackie, shut up! Wow, that's a hell of a soundbite. They respected me for saying it. They're going to make a plan, but Blackie is being disruptive, so they kick her out. Wait a minute. I'm a sheep. I can help you. No, we're going to help you leave, okay? <laughs> I admit, that line delivery right there kind of sold me on this movie. There's a cut to the farm where Grumbo is telling war stories, and then they cut back to Yuri talking about a dinosaur island that had a pirate for some reason. I mean it, I have no fucking clue why the hell he's talking about this when they're supposed to be planning a trap for Pinky. It's just a non sequitur. Meanwhile, the farmer, who we are now learning is named Brian, unless I missed something earlier, is driving out to look for Canuto and Blackie at his wife's insistence, leaving Grumbo in charge. At the base, Canuto discovers that Blackie has left because she didn't like how she was being treated or that she was going to be left behind when they go to the moon. She hides from Pinky, who is storming around the woods, and the dogs begin their plan, which is to have Canuto lure Pinky away so that the others can get to the rocket, intending for him to catch up. We finally see Pinky's face, and... Something about this seems offensive. Canuto yells a bunch of words hoping to find Pinky's deactivation code, but has to hide in a cave. Wow, even her nose hairs are pink. 
Nose hairs. Nose hairs. Ah. Why was that treated like some revelation? No one yanked his nose hairs earlier in the movie, so it's not like a callback. He's like a stoner who just realized the pizza in front of him is in fact edible. Maybe I can't deactivate her, but at least she's moved out of the way. Oh no, she's breaking free! Well fucking duh, dumbass. What did you think was gonna happen? He keeps yelling random words and Blackie runs to the rescue, grinding down the cable car line like that scene from Final Fantasy X. Hey, you. Yes, you! Don't you dare mess with that dog! Blackie, you came back to save me! Hey, what else is a girl supposed to do? While the dogs start their launch, Blackie tells Canuto she loves him and Pinky becomes even more offensive. Nice day for launch. The rocket is unsurprisingly defunct and crashes immediately, sadly killing no one. People of the moon, we come in peace. Pinky's followed us to the moon. Calm down, you dorks. I'm here to save you. From what? What are you saving them from? Tell me. There is no threat, no space alien, no evil warlock, no TikTokers. So what the hell is she there to save them from? Fucking nothing, that's what. Blackie gives up on her quest for the moon, and back at the farm, the duck is leading a revolt against Grumbo. Grumbo insults the cow, and you think she's going to kick his ass, but it's a little underwhelming. It's push-ups time! Starting with you, fatty! You wouldn't appreciate being treated like that yourself, would you? So stop messing with us, you dirty moderal hoof ya! The dogs are going to stay behind and rebuild the rocket with Pinky's help. Thanks for everything, pals. We're gonna miss you guys. We only have to close our eyes to see each other. See, this would have been a good time for them to follow up with, literally, we're all psychic. It'd be a fun little joke and help add to Canuto's supposed powers, but nope, that would have required minimal thought. Grumbo gets launched out of a catapult and Canuto and Blackie have a heart to heart. No, so long as you stop calling me darling. <laughs> Oh god, I knew you two were fucking! Having landed in the woods, Grumbo meets the wolf. I presume that this is your natural color, am I right, huh? Yeah, sure. Funny question, w why did you ask? You look like a sensitive soul, dear boy. <sighs> Let's face it, we knew which way Sparky swung from his outfit. Canuto has made a prop moon to impress Blackie, but she has discovered rock music on the TV, thus switching dreams to being a rock star. I wanna be... a star! A rock star! Quick, a microphone! Get me a mic! Oh no, it's not starting all over again, is it? Someone please tell me, it's not starting all over again! Ignoring the sheep on the moon, Canuto, her wanting to be a rock star is a far more obtainable goal than going to space. Be happy! You want a manic pixie dream girl? Well, this is part of it. I could tell you my name, but would my name tell you that I'm incapable of seeing the color orange? I just have to trust people who give me these. We then get the credits with a brief cut to Grumbo and Carl Wolf knitting, and honestly, good for them. So this movie made me want to go to the moon. Not for adventure or anything, I just think the total lack of oxygen will be good for me. It's not even one single movie, it's like a mishmash of scripts written by Professor Calamitous. And it wouldn't take much to fix either. For instance, Canuto is a specially bred astronaut dog, right? Well why didn't they hint at that in the beginning? At the very least, make it clear that he was found in the middle of nowhere or something. Make his origins a little mysterious. 
and since his real name is Yuri, I would like if the deactivation code was with him when he was found as a pup and it turned out to be Canudo. Wouldn't that have been great? Okay, it's not like the movie would become a hit just with that, but basic plot cohesion goes a long way, seriously. And you know what? For a little kid, that reveal might have been a big deal. Kids like stupid things, and you never know what they'll think is important. But oh well, it's finally over. Or so I thought. No, it's not starting all over again, is it? Someone please tell me, it's not starting all over again! I always have a physical copy of my review movies, but for convenience sake I will usually see if they are also on YouTube. So imagine my surprise when I see the title, Pup To No Good. And you may think, so what? Gladiformers has a sequel, but I don't see you reviewing that. And right you are. But you see, upon closer inspection, this movie is not a sequel, but a new story reusing the same characters. It's like Evil Dead 2. So although it goes against every rational thought, I had to buy a copy of the movie because I had decided this review must be a double feature. So I find the DVD on Amazon and order it like Logan trying to kill Gene. And then when it arrived, the box was empty! The universe was telling me, Jess, don't do this, it's not worth it. But I have crippling brain damage, so I did it again! And this time, the box arrived with a disc in it, but the disc was scratched. After a quick wipe down, the DVD works perfectly, though. This time, there's no Kaboom logo. In fact, there are much fewer companies involved in general, and it seems as if this is now a property of Momentum Pictures, whoever they are. Right off the bat, the animation quality is very clearly worse, and half the voices are different. The butterfly serves as the narrator, and is now a woman with the personality of a Sunday school teacher, rather than in the previous movie where it was a man and a sarcastic asshole. The setup moves at lightning speed, with Blackie being delivered by a truck for a two-week trial period, giving her what was Grumbo's backstory. By the way, as I said before, I had missed Grumbo's name in the first movie, so at this point I had looked at IMDB to see if his character did have an official name before, and while I couldn't find that, I did see a listing for Brian Vernier as the voice of a character named Who Flung Poo. Are you fucking kidding me? Who Flung Poo? Alright, I'm fine. Back to the sequel. Speaking of Grumbo, he is just the main sheepdog now, and Canuto is assigned to keep track of Blackie. Now I will go through all the events of the film, but I have to establish first that calling this a movie is being generous. You see, when I discovered Pup To No Good, I also discovered a series called Farm Friends. I was going to do this whole surprise third act thing, but it turns out there's no point, because this movie is the series, minus a few episodes. This is actually very common. The original Buzz Lightyear movie was a three episode and one pilot, and so was Atlantis Milo Returns, although that one never really went anywhere sadly. But this threw me completely off guard because while the last movie was four different movies layered over each other, this one is literally like eight different stories back to back, making the pacing incredibly fast and nonsensical. But since I now understand what this movie actually is, I'll try to give it some leeway. So like I said, Blackie is here on a two-week trial. Her personality is pretty much the same as before, and Canuto introduces her to the other animals. The sheep are basically the same, and the cow, Theodora, likes to sing and crows like a rooster in the mornings. The horse is named Pepe and is a liar who likes to pretend he's a world-class racehorse. I recall the race at Sandown Park Hippodrome. It was raining. Actually, Peppy place. makes it all up. What? He is what a dreamer. He's place? never even seen I another horse. Blackie doesn't like this farm and gives herself a pep talk in a mirror which is in the barn for some reason. The only purpose the mirror serves is for this joke. Who are you talking to? Hey, who's that? <laughs> it's... Uh, it's... His name's George. He's a horse just like you. George, this is Pepe. <laughs> Hello there, George. Nice to meet you. I hope you're planning on staying here at the farm. <laughs> <laughs> this doesn't come up again outside this episode, which is sad. I kind of like the idea of Pepe being friends with his reflection. Blackie insists on sleeping in Canudo's doghouse. And I'll sleep in here! No, 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 it can't hold two. Okay, this is just a pet peeve of mine, but it very clearly can hold two. It's like when there's a jail cell scene and the character could easily slip between the bars if they bothered trying. 
but that's just bullshit cartoon logic. I'll let it go. That night, she sees a TV ad for a contest. Are you proud of your family? And your farm? Well, then listen up! A plane chartered by the prestigious magazine Dreams is currently flying around the country taking photos of the best families, and the best family photo will be rewarded with a trip to the moon! She wants to enter the contest so she can get off the farm. The next morning they introduce my favorite subplot, Marvin the Duck stealing the newspaper from Grumbo. It's an ongoing joke throughout the series, and the simplicity of it is kind of charming. I like those kind of rivalries where the person is annoyed, but they would obviously be sad if it stopped. Everyone gathers to hear Theodora crowing, and Grumbo doesn't like it. Uh, oh. Jump on the count of three! Oh. One, two, and three! <laughs> 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 Blackie tells everyone about the contest, but lies saying it's to win a magazine subscription. Oh, come on! Don't be upset! Besides, the trip is for two! You can come with me! Okay? No! Those guys are my family. And so are you. My dream was to be a sheepdog. And it came true. But if you leave, then my dream is over. Thanks a lot. Huh? Uh, you've known her for, like, a day, Canuto? This feels so forced. Also, it hasn't even been ten minutes. You can see how jarring this was before I caught on to what the movie really is. It also just feels weird for her to be obligated to stay, since she's, you know, a sentient being with free will and all that junk. Putting aside the fact that she's tricking them, it's just weird, and I thought it was weird in the first movie. There's a montage of putting junk together to make a sign for the plane, and Blackie talks to the wise old man of the show, Winston. And guess who he shares a voice with? You're leaving? Mm-hmm. If you want to come, the trip is for two. You know, I left for Africa once to spend the winter with my flock. When I got lost and ended up here, I lost my family but found another. I'm not leaving. Yeah, yeah. But I'm different, you know? I was born to be free, you understand? Grumbo complains about all the commotion and Pepe attacks him, which amounts to nothing, just in time for the plane to fly over. The next day, Marvin steals the paper and the contest prize is delivered to the farmers because, duh, why would the animals get it? Honey! Oh, honey! We won a contest and we're going to Moon York! <laughs> The place where all your dreams come true! Moon York? Sure, whatever. To cheer up Blackie, Canuto shows her the scooter in the barn, but she decides to stay after all, and that's the first episode. I'll probably try to keep things shorter going forward, but I feel the pilot is important enough to spend some time on. The next episode, the gang is mad about Grumbo being a tyrant. <laughs> I bet he sleeps with a teddy bear! <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine? A tough dog like him with a toy? <laughs> oh, I sure can! <laughs> mean old Grumbo hugging a teddy bear like he hugs his little rubber duck! How? Repeat that again? Repeat what? His duck? There's nothing wrong with sleeping with the toy if it makes you feel comfortable. Of course not, but I'm sure Grumbo has a soft side. I... was that a counter? Of course he has a soft side. That's implied by him sleeping with the rubber duck. Have you ever tried to explain a grammar rule that you don't understand? You know something sounds wrong, but you don't have the words to explain it? This is kind of like that. So they steal the rubber duck, and the next day he chases Marvin for the paper, but I just want to highlight this. Um, I say, boys, how about removing the newspapers from your mouths? That right there is the most well-written part of either movie so far. The horse lets it slip that Blackie stole the rubber duck, and Blackie launches it into the woods. Grumbo makes her look for it with him, and they get scared. Here they reintroduced Carl Wolf, but this time he is much nicer and only acts menacing. I haven't told anyone this before, but I've got a secret. I... I have a black belt in karate! And as 
you can see, I wear it all the time. Yeah, that's it. And that's, a uh, um, uh, why I look completely black. <laughs> Well, I've got a secret. I bet you didn't know that I am a... Vegetarian. <laughs> Grumbo saves her, and they gain a mutual understanding with him acting nicer to the other animals. The next episode is about a UFO, but I want to address a point of confusion. Grumbo acts weird in this segment, and it's because he was hit on the head by a bucket at the end of the last one, but I didn't make the connection because it is so disjointed. It cuts directly to Blackie on the roof seeing the UFO, but she was in bed like a second ago. It's just sloppily stitched together. Blackie wants to investigate the UFO, but has to go alone and get spooked. <gasps> Marvin steals the paper, but as mentioned, Grumbo has brain damage. The farmers leave Canuto in charge so they can go to the vet, but they come back with Grumbo immediately, which on a first viewing made it look like a plot hole that they just left him behind. But instead, there was just no point in taking him to the vet because it accounted for two seconds of plot. Blackie makes a big deal about Canuto being a chicken, and we get more advice from Eggman. That was quite a story, huh? I saw you running back! Did something frighten you? Are you calling me a chicken? I didn't say that. You did, Blocky. Don't try to trick me! Fear's not a bad thing. It deters us from taking unnecessary risks that can harm us. Nonsense. And you better not tell anyone, okay? <laughs> <laughs> You're in for it now, Blocky. To get back at Blocky, Canuto leads the animals on an excursion to see the UFO as part of a prank. Meanwhile, Marvin is watching Grumbo. <laughs> Bring around the road, the apocryphal opposes. Jingle bell, jingle all the way. rock a bye baby. You sound like an MP3 player, my friend. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. That's a good idea. Nap time. When the bell breaks, the cradle will fall. They find the UFO, which turns out to be a man-made rocket with an AI system. Blackie tricks it into thinking she is the captain, and it becomes a mainstay of the series. That night, Blackie and Canuto have a heart-to-heart. -heart. Hmm. You were very brave going into that spaceship today. What happened last night? Uh, I got scared. But with all my friends, it was much easier. Yeah? Hmm. Because you were there to keep me safe. Isn't that right, my sheepdog? <laughs> <laughs> Did I scare you? Next, we have Winston tired because Marvin kept him up all night talking about being sick because he's a hypochondriac. But I need some help here. Watch this. Pepe, hurry! Throw a bucket of water over him! <laughs> No water? Oh, you guys drive me crazy. You didn't ask for a bucket with water. You said of water. Oh. You're welcome. I think that the brain damage I have sustained from these movies has gotten too severe, because I have no idea what the fucking joke is here. What the hell is a bucket of water if not a bucket with water in it? Is it a bucket made of water? Because that's not what he brought them. Despite the weird delivery of lines sometimes, I can usually understand what is being said, but I have no idea what the intended joke here is. I get that these movies are poorly translated, I do, but surely someone along the line could have caught this and realized it made no sense. Anyway, Marvin thinks he has the ovine flu, which is sweeping the countryside. These kind of plots just do not hit the same way they used to, I tell ya. Kunudo realizes Blackie has the disease, and when the vet comes to inspect all the sheep, she tries to avoid him. The sheep lead the vet over to her, and she gets fixed up. Oh, also there's a side plot of the cow and horse trying to see the vet so they can get lollipops. As I explained to you both before, you are a horse, and you're a cow. Alright, that got a chuckle from me. Sue me. 
The segment ends with Marvin keeping Winston awake again and Canuto talking to Blackie on the roof. Oh, but now I feel this pain under my wing. What do you think that is? Uh, will someone oh. please get Marvin out of here? I want to sleep! Poor Winston. He needs Blackie, rest. did you drink your syrup? Let me see your tongue. Uh, it's no longer blue. You see? The doctor isn't so bad, but because of you, everyone on the farm is on sick leave. Well, they want to go see the doctor. You promised they would all get huh? lollipops. It's only been one week since Blackie arrived at Liberty Farm and she has spread her virus all throughout it. The virus of amusement. After that story, we have Blackie trying to learn math and holy shit that sounds bad. Marvin gets stranded on the water tower because of his newspaper antics and jumps on the cow because he can't fly. Meanwhile, Pepe is avoiding some big race because despite his boasts, he's never been in one. I think. Uh, huh? Don't tell anyone where I'm hiding. They want to take me to the race that will be held in the village, and I don't want to go. Uh -huh. But Pepe, you're a racehorse. Even the donkeys participate in the race, but at least I have some class. Ho! Oh, oh, oh. uh, uh. Alright, don't see what that has to do with anything. Anyway, Blackie wants to win a radio math contest, so Canuto is going to teach her math. Then there is some more Winston advice, which honestly is pretty shoehorned in, but hey, I get to keep making Eggman jokes, so works for me. Winston, how about some words of wisdom? All of us have something new to teach, and very much to learn. Ooh. Did you hear that, girl? Is that yeah. true? Each and every one of us is unique. We all hmm, have talents. <laughs> And our talents enable us to develop our personal skills and become more creative. Some of us may excel in certain things, which others do not. The other animals start doing some school thing to learn new talents, and Kinudo gets annoyed that Blackie is bored by the lesson. So, you're finding this boring, huh? Uh-huh. <laughs> Those who don't want to learn never will. Come back. This is a minor point for me, but I have ADHD and a ton of school was a boring hellscape, but as an adult that can set my own pace and learn what I want, I love learning. It's not on the student to magically be interested in school, it's on the school to make learning interesting. But again, minor thing, this episode isn't harmful or anything. Later Blackie throws the competition. Why did you say 22? I said it because I wanted to prove to you that I wanted to learn no matter what and to keep on learning not just for the sake of winning a contest. I guess that was an arc. I don't know if I'm portraying it accurately enough, but this episode in particular was basically just a pile of mashed potatoes. Stuff happened. The end. Next up, Pepe is moving stuff out of the barn because Blackie told him he could. She's tired of the rules and has everyone rallying for more freedom. Meanwhile, Marvin has the hiccups and they have the audacity to do a Roadrunner bit. Uh, He'll... Me, 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 me. You think because she did it, it's okay for you? You haven't earned what she's earned, buddy. Kunudo confronts Blackie, but she's preoccupied turning the rocket into a sauna. She intends to live there now, visiting for meals, of course. All the animals follow suit, though, and it devolves into chaos. Grumbo and Canudo follow, too, and make nuisances of themselves to make a point. Grumbo starts establishing structures so they can find food and survive, which convinces everyone to just go back home, because real freedom requires rules. Which is true, but I don't care. Look, Pepe brought the mirror with him. They reference that again after all. Blackie is more stubborn, but she goes back because she's lonely. Huh? <laughs> oh my, look who's come back. Yeah, well, it got dark and... And the wolves were scaring you. No, silly dog. It's just that a night without you and I on the roof is like a night without stars. <laughs> <laughs> I admit I'm a sap and I thought that was kind of sweet, but I don't know if they really did enough to earn that. Remember, this all takes place over a couple weeks. These people barely know each other. As an aside, the episode ends with Marvin still having hiccups. It's just not resolved and doesn't tie into the A-plot at all. Weird. Getting close to the end now, we start the next episode with Pepe wanting to learn to play soccer while Blackie is using the moped to get the paper for Marvin. 
The guy from the very beginning shows up because Blackie's trial period is up. The farmers are sick of her even though they barely acknowledged her, so they tell him to take her back. He's going to come back tomorrow, which I don't get. I mean, he has the truck right there and he came out here for this purpose already. Whatever, I know what they're doing, they need time for everyone to stress over it. Pepe's soccer lessons are being destructive and the wolf shows up asking for Blackie. Apparently he's been having nightmares about wolves, so he wants to stay a few nights. He is a strange character. He tells Canuto that Blackie is being taken away and he of course is worried about her, but she's being stubborn. Thankfully we have the Eggman. <laughs> Asking for help isn't a sign of weakness. Those who are around us can help us do things that sometimes we cannot do by ourselves. Blackie, at this Blackie. farm, we're all friends. We all help each other. When we fell off the roof, Peppy helped us. And I asked Canuto to teach me how to kick a soccer ball, and he helped me out. This morning, you helped me to get hold of the newspaper. Hmm? Uh, and I asked you to help me out because of the nightmares I was having, and you did. And you guys really want to help me? Consider it done! Yes! 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 They make some convoluted plan that doesn't pan out, so they instead fake her death, pretending Carl Wolf killed her. I'm pretty sure the farmers would catch on that she's alive when she starts walking around, but I love the guy's response to the matter. Oh no! The wolf got Blackie! I guess she's neither staying nor leaving. <laughs> then they sing. It's not good. Help! Get me some help! I'm all alone and worried, so please, please hurry, will you please get me some help? Hey, wow, I didn't like that. Oh. Wow, the twists and turns that life takes. When Blackie arrived at Liberty Farm, she wanted to leave. Today, everyone has helped her to stay. <laughs> now, no one can ever get her to leave, you know? Um, yes? Can I go now? Finally, we arrive at the last episode and the end of this godforsaken franchise. Grumbo has finally got one over on Martin, but he has to give up the paper because the farmer's wife is calling. The electricity has been turned off, which she needs to tell the dog for some reason. Blackie is just annoyed she can't watch TV, so Canuto tells her to use the rocket's internet. Okay. How am I gonna watch TV? Oh, who cares? Go watch it inside the rocket on the internet. Ha ha! <laughs> oh! The smartest dog in the world! <laughs> I think that's the first time in this version of the story that a romance has been hinted between them. It kind of comes out of nowhere, but at the same time, it feels a bit more genuine. Still weird to think it's only been two weeks, though. Back in the barn, Grumbo gives the sad news that the farmers are broke and the farm is being sold off so they can move to a retirement home. The description of the series calls the animals musical, but it is only now that we get any significant example. Now, if there's something you want to change, do not sit and rack your brain. Just get up and fight with all your needs. Dance and jump and sing and scream. For liberty, far we shall fight. At least we will try with all of our might. Unfortunately, they are just going to do that same song, over and over. Blackie gets bored of staring at what appears to be a slideshow of vehicles. I would say that's stupid, but it's not much worse than TikTok or YouTube shorts, and I have often been caught in a multi-hour doom scroll, ultimately watching nothing of substance or value. Time for round two of the song. We are artists that are no small deal. A thousand races I will win. The farm we shall save by all of our means. So dance and jump and sing and scream. For the big farm we shall fight. At least we will try with all of our might. <laughs> At least Grumbo was into it. Pepe sees a newspaper article and I'll let him read it. The space agency 
is searching for rockets and satellites that disappeared throughout the last decade. Any assistance will be handsomely rewarded. Huh? Read that again, Pepe. <laughs> read? Me? I can't read. Ahem. <clears throat> I will read it. The Space Agency is searching for rockets and satellites that disappeared throughout the last decade. Any assistance will be handsomely rewarded. Come on, you really didn't need to have Marvin read it again. That is obvious padding. So Blackie comes up with the plan to lead the farmers to the rocket so they can claim the reward money. I actually think this is kind of sad, because I genuinely liked that she had a weird science lab clubhouse essentially, AI friend included. In my opinion, it's a misstep to write it out of the show. I mean, I doubt this is ever going to continue again, but still. Song repeat round three. So dance and jump and sing and scream For Liberty Farm we shall fight At least we will try with all of our might <laughs> They enact their plan and there is a really annoying joke about hiding the farmer's face throughout the scene. I don't get it. We know what he looks like already. This is a sequel. It may not be structured like one, but the whole idea is we've seen these characters before. They even show enough of his face to confirm that he is just the same model as the first movie. Maybe it is funny to others, but I've sat through so much bullshit with this franchise that it was just confusing and annoying. Oh, and they're singing their song again. Maybe it would have hit better if the song was introduced in the very beginning instead of just now. Blackie says goodbye to the rocket's computer and is still inside it when it gets picked up. Everyone realizes she's gone and they see her on the TV. They think she's gone forever, but she was returned to the farm. I miss you so much. How much is so much? Huh? A little? Huh? A lot? Huh? <laughs> Between all of them, they've saved huh? the farm. And Blackie has learned another important lesson. One must fight for what one wants, even if it seems an impossible task. Wait, did they just kiss? So is that, like, official then? Just out of the blue it's a done deal that they're a couple? Okay. But we can't end without one last song reprise. United to save our house Should anyone want to throw us out Because here we will stay So dance and jump and sing and scream Because for the farm we shall fight Between us all we'll succeed indeed Indeed! <laughs> and we're done. This was supposed to be a short video and it quickly ballooned into something big. But it's not the worst thing I've had to watch. I think the series is better than the movie by far, and in a weird way it grew on me by the end. That usually happens with these movies because I can't help but have a soft spot for them when I have to watch them over and over to make these reviews. Eventually they get under your skin. I think the movie is ass, but I honestly think the series Farm Friends, or whatever it's supposed to be called, has some degree of genuine charm to it, and with the right tweaking could be a pretty decent cartoon. It would at least be as good as the cartoon Back at the Barnyard, remember that show? But my bar for this stuff is pretty low now. As long as your movie is a genuine attempt to entertain, I'm inclined to be pretty forgiving, as opposed to something like Gladiformers, which is possibly the laziest, dullest ripoff I've ever seen. I'll say it right now, if they ever make another proper season of this, or another reboot, I can guarantee I will watch and review it. But for now, I am done. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye